You're listening to the Parkway Podcast. Paul used this opportunity to appeal to him in love. He was asking Philemon to go beyond just hearing the words about the kingdom of God and actually live them out real time, live them out and take a slave as a brother. And why would Paul ask such a heavy thing like this? And this is the truth that I want. I want you guys to dig into tonight. He would ask this because the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Hi, this episode is from our prayer and worship nights. We gather every Sunday night at 5 p.m. for a deeper and intense style service. Each Sunday night features a new worship team and a speaker from various ministries here at Parkway. The service ends with a time of intentional prayer as we respond to God's word, pray for our community, and pray for one another. If you miss a service, you can catch up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube Podcasts, or online at parkwaycc.com slash sermons. Yes, Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for this time we were able to spend together. God, as a as the church, God, we were able to come and have you. And so, Father, we thank you. Lord, just prepare our hearts tonight for what you have for us, not only in the word, but God, even as a time as Pastor Kylie comes and challenges us, that Father, that we'll also be challenged to be able to go respond whatever she has for us tonight. And so, Father, as we get ready to head into this time, God, don't allow your spirit to move on. God, we're just going to transition into your word and to be able to receive what you have for us tonight. And so, Father, we thank you. We praise you. And in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. You guys are awesome. If you guys can do me a huge favor, I'm not going to steal any more of the limelight. We have a wonderful devotion plan for each and every one of you guys. And so if you guys can do me a huge favor and welcome Pastor Kylie up as she makes her way up. Do you guys love Sunday nights too? Like, is it just me or is it just a good time? I love that word that Ashlyn shared at the beginning, how God deposits something in the morning, but this is like the watering time. It really is that. And so that's my prayer for tonight, that this would just be a continuing of a watering time for us. Um, And I want to say thank you. Thank you guys for being here. I love this crowd. You guys really are the people who are like the sold outs, the ready to be here. I love it. Um, It's some of the greatest joy of my week to get to spend this with you. And uh, I'm really thankful that we have a pastor that lets young people like me get to speak, but also believed in this thing and believed that we needed Sunday nights because I'm thankful for it. At first we said, I was like, well, how are we going to do this? But look at this, you guys. This has been a great time. I can't wait for when we get to look back. You guys remember when Sunday night service started, how good it was, how good it is now? I'm excited to reflect on that. Um, So hi, my name is Kylie. If I haven't got to meet you before, I hope I do after service sometime. Um, First of all, Um, there's a lot of things you should know about me, but one of them is that, um, I get to be a wife. I've been a wife for six years. That went by really quick. Um, I'm also a mom to a little two year old. If you see a little blonde boy with curly hair running around, let me know because he's mine and he's really hard to follow. Um, I also no seriously, like if you see him, let me know. Um, that's not a joke. Uh, so uh, I also had the opportunity to be a middle school pastor. Um, I've gotten to do that for a few years here, and I've loved it. Um, if you guys don't know, we have the best middle schoolers in the whole planet here in Grants Pass. Aren't we lucky? Yeah, we really do have the best ones. Um, this morning, I was so impressed this morning. Um, so while you guys were in service, we were in our own class, and I challenged our middle schoolers, hey, I want you guys to take sticky notes, and I want you to look through your Bibles, and I want you to write down a passage, a verse, something, a blessing that you can go back and write on the walls in our church because we're going to be a generation that blesses the future generations, and the generation now is already doing that. And you know what they did? They didn't ignore me. They didn't run off. They didn't just draw pictures on their sticky notes or make them into paper airplanes, which I thought they might. They actually like sat in there and really wrote and were really thinking about it. I was so impressed. Like we just put on worship music and they got into their word. So if you ever are questioning if the next generation doesn't love Jesus or isn't going for God, you're wrong. I saw it today and you need to come hang out if you don't believe me. I got a place for you, trust me. Um, So uh, another thing you should know about me and my little family, if you hang around us too long, you'll find out that our cars are a little rough around the edges. (laughs) Um, And our Honda Fit may or may not be held together by zip ties right now, but that's okay. (laughs) 
Um, they run great, they just look a little rough around the edges. And I'm not gonna lie, most of that is due to our crazier adventures up in the woods somewhere. Um, I have a wild husband, but that's okay. Um, he doesn't care about what the paint job on our car looks like, just that it runs and I agree with him, that's great. Um, but that all being said, we happen to get flat tires more than the average person. Um, like often, like I was like eight months pregnant with our son and we had a flat tire in the woods, but it got figured out, it was fine. Um, anyway, so when my son was four months old, um, we unfortunately had one of those fun flat tires along I-5. Anyone been there before? Yeah, super fun. Um, so we're on our way up north to go visit family and sadly we get a flat tire. So we pull over to the Le Schwab in Roseburg and we're waiting and we bring my, our son is in the waiting room, you know, crawling around, being crazy or whatever. And we're just having a good time because we're like, well, we can't go anywhere, so we might as well enjoy it. And we're kind of sucking up that we're going to lose a little money from our bank account. Who hates paying for tires too? I hate it. It's so obnoxious. Um, anyways, so we get to the end. The guy who's I don't know, the Le Schwab guy, comes up. He's like, oh, hey, your car's done. So my husband goes up, and he's like, okay, like, what do we owe you? And he's like, oh, actually, someone already paid your bill. It's gone. And we're like, what? That is crazy. I know someone, it probably, I don't know what, who this person was or why they did that. It probably helped that we had a really cute baby, you know, four months old helps. Um, but what I do know, that's incredible when someone does something like that for you. It's incredible when someone pays something for you. Am I wrong? Like that is a good feeling. And so tonight we're going to talk about a scripture that highlights this idea of both being unified and paying the price for someone else. Um, so I'm going to be speaking. This will help. I'm going to be speaking out of Paul's shortest letter. So it won't be long. Um, his shortest letter, Philemon. If you've never read it, you should. It's an incredible passage of scripture. Um, it's interesting because uh, this passage of scripture is so unique for Paul because he doesn't directly state the gospel, but yet the gospel is so in it. Um, and if you're wondering why I chose this, um, I also wondered why I wondered why God hi highlighted this part of scripture. And I believe there's a deep meaning that we need to soak in tonight. Um, but before we do, can you guys pray with me? Um, so Lord, I just thank you for this time. God, I thank you that the good news of Jesus Christ is for everyone. God, what a gift that is. What a good truth that is. And God, I, I thank you that, God, you're going to meet us tonight. God, that I'm, I'm praying, God, that my heart has changed. But God, also in this room, God, we would be a people who love people and see that the gospel is for everyone. And so, God, would you help me communicate that well tonight in your name? Amen. The good news of Jesus Christ can change anyone. And our world needs to know that truth. Um. The good news of Jesus is extremely personal, right? It's extremely personal, but it's never private. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. The good news changes us in a way that's not only personal, but it changes the way we treat and view our world. You following me? So this letter that we're going to read, or we're not going to read, but I'm going to explain it to you guys. You're going to go back and read it later, right? Okay, good. Um, so this letter is unique as it's not written to be read aloud. Like if you start reading most of Paul's letters, they're written to be read aloud, but this one isn't. It's written as a personal letter, man to man, two people, one Christian to another communicating. So why do we read it and what do we gain from it? This letter describes what it looks like to live the Christian life, both for a new believer and those more experienced in the faith. This letter is written by Paul to a man named Philemon, um, he's a wealthy Roman citizen uh, living in Colossae who likely met Paul during his missions in Ephesus, and then he became a follower. So Paul was the guy that he got saved under his ministry. And when a community of Jesus people started in Colossae, Philemon became their leader of this church that was based in his home. So most likely he was wealthy. He was um, leading this church. He was the head uh, pastor of this church at the time. So Philemon, like other household patriarchs of the time, he had slaves. This was common in the Roman world. And one of them was named Onesimus. Um, Onesimus, at some point during his enslavement under Philemon, wronged him. Um, we don't know exactly what he did. Scripture doesn't say that. 
But perhaps a lot of historians believe it was theft or cheating or something to some extreme kind he did. And whatever he did, he made it a lot worse because he ran away. He ran away from his problems. And what you should know is that running away as a fugitive slave in the Roman world was scary and constituted death very easily. So Onesimus finally, eventually he meets Paul of all people. He meets Paul in Rome. Most likely he was seeking refuge. And in this meeting, Onesimus and Paul together, uh, Paul leads him to um, salvation. He finds Jesus. Onesimus is changed. A runaway fugitive slave in Roman times becomes a believer. Um, and even more so, he becomes a disciple of Paul. And even to go further, Paul calls him his son. He treats him like he's family. Cl and the closest kind of family you can have, there's not a lot of deeper relationship than a father and a son. And that's how he treats him. But there were still consequences. And many of you guys know that when you become a Christian, there's still consequences on the other side. You still have lived a life. And so Onesimus was no different. Onesimus' actions still remained in a legal sense. They were active. See, what he did constituted death. It, a lot of historians believe that in the Roman times, even the idea of breaking a cup as a servant would lead to death. Like that was constituted death. So what he did was so, so much more. And if he was found out, a lot of times they would brand fugitives, like they would brand them and then bring them back to their master. But the truth is this, is that the good news of Jesus can change and also free anyone. See, Paul believed this about Onesimus. And instead of keeping him in bondage of being a fugitive and a runaway slave, Paul encouraged him to do the difficult thing. He encouraged Onesimus to return for forgiveness. But more radically, he appealed to love and love to Philemon to forgive him and even more so to take him in as a brother. He was asking to take what was once his slave and take him in as a brother and equal in Christ. I love how the commentary from the gospel project states it. The gospel project is an awesome resource. If you're looking to summarize parts of the Bible um, and it says this, it says, this is a way, this is way beyond kindness. It's unheard of freeing an enslaved person and treating them like family would mean ups upsetting the status quo of Roman social order. Why should Philemon do such a thing? At this point, Paul pulls a brilliant move, recalling the key word quinea, um, probably didn't say that right, but that's fine, from his opening prayer. He said that if you are truly a partner with me, then welcome Onesimus as if it were me. And if he's wronged you or owes you anything, charge it to me and I will repay you. That's out of Philemon 17 through 19. With this request, we can see that Paul's heart um, or Paul's gospel message being acted out. For Paul, the gospel is about reconciliation. First, uh, first of all, as he told the Corinthians, in the Messiah, God reconciled the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. Paul is reflecting what Jesus has done for humanity. He will absorb the consequences of Onesimus' wrongdoings and pay the cost himself, all so that he can be reconciled with Philemon. This was more than a legal transaction. Paul was asking Philemon to shift from being part of the culture of the world to being part of the culture of the kingdom of heaven. It was unheard of in this time. Um, and the truth is that Paul, um, is as Paul states at the beginning of the letter, that Paul was his superior. Paul could have told Philemon, you're going to do this. You were saved under my ministry. You're going to do this. But that's not what he did because that's not what Paul was looking for here. Paul used this opportunity to appeal to him in love. He was asking Philemon to go beyond just hearing the words about the kingdom of God and actually live them out real time, live them out and take a slave as a brother. And why would Paul ask such a heavy thing like this? And this is the truth that I want. I want you guys to dig into tonight. He would ask this because the ground is level at the foot of the cross. All three men were sinners and needed a savior. All of them. Colossians 3, 11 through 13 says this. Here there's no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. 
Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, um, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. When preparing this message, I felt this tug on my heart um, that this lesson isn't intentionally about redirecting or correction, but actually it's a message to get ready. See, I believe that as our world gets darker and our um, and the things around us are darker and the culture that we're living in is darker, that the light of the gospel is going to be more attractive than ever. And when that happens, there's going to be people coming in our churches and it's going to be hard. You're going to be the Philemon. And, you, and maybe there's going to be people walking into our churches who are the Onesimus. That's the hope. Brothers and sisters in Christ are coming home and we need to prepare our hearts to be those Christians who are compassionate who have kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, who can bear one another and forgive one another. I'm going to welcome our worship team back up, and we're going to take some time to reflect on this. But my question for you guys is, will you first, will you be the Paul? Will you be willing to lead in faith and disciple someone and stand in the gap for the Onesimus? and stand in the gap and watch someone come to Jesus and stand in the gap and stand behind them through the hard, through the hard decisions. Will you forgive and embrace each other as brothers and sisters in Christ when you're faced with a different, difficult situation like Philemon? Scripture actually doesn't tell us what he decided, what happened at the end. Sometimes I wonder if that's intentional, that he didn't tell us what happened. Um, in church history, it's believed that he did accept Onesimus, but I think the beauty of it is, is there's a question at the end. Will you? He's appealing in love, and I believe that God is also appealing in love to us. Will we take them on? Those who have offended us or hurt us or wronged us, will we take them on, even in the midst when it's difficult? And finally, if you're the Onesimus, and you're scared to connect or you feel less than when you're at a church or being with a body of believers, the ground's level at the foot of the cross. That truth is so beautiful. So we're gonna take a moment in my encouragement to you guys, would you reflect on that? Would you reflect on being the Paul, being the Philemon who makes the right decision? And would you pray that God would bring us Onesimus, that he would draw them into the building and that they would be saved and transformed by Jesus because God can save anyone. There's no one beyond saving. And if you truly believe that, would you lean into it tonight? Would you pray with me? So we're going to pray together and then we're going to take a few moments to reflect. If you need to reflect where you're sitting or you need to stand up, um, please, please feel free to. But would you guys pray with me? So, Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you, um, God, you didn't say some might come into the kingdom of heaven or some can come to you or some can come to the cross and find salvation. But, God, you did that for all of us. God, I thank you that at the foot of the cross, the ground is level. God, our past can stay there. Our past sins can stay there. And God, we can walk in new freedom. God, I thank you for that. God, would you help us to be a people, God, who has compassionate hearts, who knows how to forgive, who can bear one another in love. Would you help us with that, God? God, would you help prepare our hearts for what is the future? God, I thank you that this isn't just going to be a building where we are, but God, there's many to come into this building and there's many who are going to find faith in you. God, I thank you for that. God, would you move in us right now? Could every heart in this room, would you begin to prepare us in your name? Would you guys stand on your feet? I just wanted to do a, and I had this vision of us as Pastor Kylie was speaking. Each and every one of us are connected to people in this community that would seem like the least obvious people to come to Jesus. And I felt like we were supposed to pray out 
uh, out of our own selves for them right now. And I don't know which name is going to come to mind. I don't know if it's a neighbor. I don't know if it's a coworker. I don't know if it's someone where they were in church and now they're away from church. I don't know what the person that God's going to bring to your mind or your spirit is right now. But I felt like the Lord wanted to stir our burden up for people right now. And so I want you to take 60 seconds, maybe grab the hand of a spouse or a friend or a neighbor. Maybe it's a grandkid that's in the, in the, in the area. Someone that, it, that this church is going to begin to pray for that on mission, people are going to come to this house and we are going to accept them not as, not as slaves, as Pastor Kylie said, or worldly people, but they're going to become brothers and sisters in Christ. And so just, just before Pastor Chase comes and closes us out, would you take 60 seconds to begin to pray for the lost person that comes to your heart and your mind right now and ask the Lord for open doors? That, that this week, God's going to give you open doors for the lost people in your world. Father, would you just continue to highlight those individuals, God. I know there's been plenty of names that have been brought up and, and lifted up in prayer right now, but Father, would you continue just to highlight specific individuals in our community? Father, people that we didn't even think of tonight, people that we didn't even pray about, God, would you highlight them as we go to our workplaces this week, as we stop by the hospital, as we go through and or at our schools for some of our middle school and high school students that are in the room, whatever it may be, God, would you just highlight individuals, Father, that need that reconciliation? And then, Father, also, I mean, as Pastor Kylie was mentioning, God, I was reminded about how all of us can, of course, be Paul's and be praying for those to be able to stand up for those to be able to say, you know what, these individuals need to come in back to you. But, Father, I was also reminded for the individuals inside this room that, Father, there might even be people who say, I don't really man, uh, really uh, get to a place where I, I, I see myself as Paul, but God, I also see myself as Philemon. And maybe we got to be able to accept people back in. Maybe that that's got to be our call and our challenge tonight. Or God, maybe we are Onesimus and God, we're running away. Father, I just pray inside this place that God, I, I don't want this moment to, to leave and say, man, that word wasn't for me because God, you mentioned and called out three different groups of people and all of them were meant for one of us inside this room. And so Father, as we get ready to leave this place, God, not, not only highlight those that we're supposed to be praying for and supposed to be grabbing and bringing back into the church, but Father, I also want to be able to pray for the individuals inside this room that say, man, I, I, I don't want to be the person at the end of that passage going, but did I? Did I accept them back? God, yes, we will accept them back. God, yes, we got to be able to forgive. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Father. And so, Father, all across this place, God, we just continue to be able to just allow that word to just uh, permeate through our hearts tonight. That, God, that as we leave this place, God, remind us of this. Remind us of this wonderful challenge. So, Father, we thank you. God, we honor you for this wonderful time we're able to have together. God, allow this to be a, a building block for us as we get ready to go back into that, out to that world. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name and everyone's said, Amen.